Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Holy Paladin Mythic Plus guide for Lightsmith Avenging Crusader in Mythic Plus. Yes, Herald of the Sun is quite popular, but Lightsmith is very powerful as well. And with that, you can reduce the cooldown of your wings down to one minute and have a very engaging playstyle with the Avenging Crusader build that I'm going to show you. If you like the content, please feel free to check the links in the description below in order to support the channel. And now, without further ado, let's go. As a Holy Paladin, your main goal remains building Holy Power and then spending this to either do healing or, if you don't have anyone to heal, do damage. Your most important spell in that regard is called Holy Shock and you can use it either to heal a friendly unit or do damage to an enemy target. It generates holy power in both cases and it synergizes with pretty much everything in your toolkit. However, right now there is one spell that is much more powerful and you should press it before holy shock and on cooldown every time it's available. That's judgment and it does a lot of things. It generates holy power, it does damage and due to the greater judgment talent it also prevents a certain amount of damage that your target is going to do next. It can also cast an extra Consecration at the feet of your target and during Avenging Crusader, which is your wings, it is your main source of healing, as the damage that it does is converted into HPS. So long story short, this is your most important button and you should be pressing it every time on cooldown with priority even over Holy Shock. Next in line for the Holy Power Builders is Crusader Strike, which is pretty much a weaker version of Judgment, which you have to be in melee to cast and Judgment you can throw from a distance. The last Holy Power Generator is called Hammer of Wrath. This one you can only cast at targets at low health or when you get certain procs. And when it comes to Holy Power Generation, it's just a feeler, but if you want to do more damage, you can prioritize this button over Crusader Strike. You can have up to 5 stacks of holy power and once you have 3, you can use a spender ability to invest them in. In Mythic Plus you only have one healing option and that's Word of Glory, huge single target heal and if you have no one to heal, you can actually spend them in the Shield of the Righteous, which is a frontal AoE damaging ability. Now you do have one more spell which is a frontal AoE heal, it's called Light of Dawn. But you have much better options to do AoE healing in Mythic Plus, so that's a button that you won't be pressing much or even at all. In order to finish our main or maintenance healing rotation, we need to mention two more skills first. Consecration is a damaging ability that you drop on the ground and its healing abilities, so to speak, were stripped away. You can still pick some minor talents that are going to do very little healing for it, so it's basically insignificant and you should only considering a damaging ability. However, it can do significant amount of free damage during trash pools, so this is when you should be using it on cooldown. The other ability is called Holy Prism and you can consider that to be a small 30 second cooldown. It's much more important in Herald of the Sun builds, but for Lightsmith, it can do AoE healing if you cast it on an enemy target, it's going to heal everybody in your party, or you can use it as a single target healing instead if you cast it on a friendly unit. So that completes our main rotation, and in order to summarize, first you want to keep down your Consecration, especially during Trash Pools, and then use your Holy Prism as a small cooldown every time it's available. Your next main priority is to spend holy power as you don't want to overcap on that. Word of glory if you need to heal someone and if you don't, you can just spend it on the shield of the righteous. As mentioned before, your most important button outside of that is judgment. You should be pressing that every time it's off of cooldown and the rest of the time you should revert back to your holy shocks again, either for healing or damage depending on the situation. If everything is on cooldown, you can press crusader strike instead and then your last resort should be Hammer of Wrath if it's available or you want to do some extra damage. Now when you need to do AoE healing, your go-to talent right now is called Beacon of Virtue. Once you cast it, everyone in your party is getting a portion of the healing that you do, so it's ideal to handle AoE burst situations. Not to mention that you have another talent that reduces the damage that the targets with your beacon actually take. The cooldown is just 15 seconds and it lasts for 8, 
which means that you can use that on cooldown every time you need to heal more than one person and you can definitely afford to do that with the current mana tuning. You can of course hold it for a few seconds in certain situations if you know that there's a big AoE damage coming up. And it's also ideal to have already 5 Holy Power before you cast it so you can Word of Glory, Holy Shock and then Word of Glory again to do a huge healing combo. Now you can also play with the other beacons available in the Paladin Talent Tree. They are totally fine but playing with them is a little bit more complicated and the tuning of Beacon of Virtue is definitely superior right now. By any means though, if you feel like it, feel free to experiment. There are a couple of things that make the Lightsmith build shine. The first one is the new ability added by the Hero Talents. It starts as a Holy Bulwark. That's an Absorb Shield that you apply to your target and it keeps reapplying itself for a smaller amount. You have two charges of that with a 1 minute cooldown but once you press the button it turns into a sacred weapon. This one has a chance to do additional healing or damage based on the skills used of your target and when you press that button it turns back into a Holy Bulwark. It gets even better when you add into the mix a talent called Solidarity. This one duplicates the previous skills that we mentioned so that there's a version of themselves on yourself and on an ally once you cast them. So you're basically getting double the value every time you press these buttons. There's a chance for you to get even more value as there's a talent that has a chance to summon one of those two skills when you're using your regular spells and abilities. Long story short, you want to be casting these all the time, the cooldown of one of them should be always rolling. The shield you can always throw at your tank, unless you know that somebody else is going to be taking heavy damage and they need extra healing. And right now it seems that it doesn't matter which target you pick for your weapon as long as it's up and it's rolling and of course you can track that buff to make sure you're not casting it on somebody who already has it because of the random procs. If you keep them up during a mythic plus run they're going to contribute to your overall damage and healing with the shield actually doing quite significant amount of your overall HPS. That is the case also because of another talent called tempered in battle which transfers over healing on targets that wield the shield and if they drop low you start to redistribute your health which is potentially going to save them but you have to be very careful with this talent because you will be dropping low as well at this point, especially in heavy AoE situations. Let's also mention one more talent here before the capstone, Hammer and Anvil makes your judgment critical strike to do extra damage and healing on the location where they hit. And we already mentioned that judgment is quite high on your priority list but that makes it even more important. And that brings us to the capstone talent Blessing of the Forge which summons an additional sacred weapon when you press your wings. And even more so that weapon goes wild while you are in your wings. So what you want to do is maximize the uptime of that buff and what better way to do that than Avenging Crusader. Avenging Crusader is a talent that replaces your Avenging Rat and during your wings instead of doing increased damage and healing your judgment and crusader strike damage is transferred into healing instead with their cooldown being reduced so they can recharge faster and even more importantly the cooldown of the spell itself is reduced down to one minute. When you add into the mix the awakening talent which can give you an extra proc of the wings when you spend a bunch of holy power and by the way you activate that through judgment the overall uptime of your wings could be quite significant in a dungeon and while they're active you'll be getting the benefits of the sacred weapon that we already mentioned. However it's also important to know that during the wings your priority changes a little bit with your rotation because your healing is now going to be done mainly through your judgment and crusader strike. So when your wings are up you always press judgment on cooldown then you press crusader strike and you ignore all the other buttons including Holy Shock with the only exception being to spare a globo to spend your holy power once you build enough. The reason for that of course is not to overcap but you also have a lightsmith talent called Blessed Assurance which makes your next crusader strike do double damage after you press a holy power spender. And more damage during wings also means more healing.
This rotation during wings is going to be more than enough to carry the healing and of course you can use the blessing of virtue as well to help if there is a heavy airway damage happening. Now if somehow you manage to get judgment and crusader strike both on cooldown and you have no holy power to spend you can press holy shock. But you're quickly going to feel how powerful Avenging Crusader is in this build because of the increased damage of the Crusader Strike and all the benefits of Judgment that we already mentioned. And the best part, it's only 1 minute cooldown which means that you can pop it multiple times during boss fights and trash pulls. So popping your wings every minute, having beacon of virtue every 15 seconds and the sacred armaments is going to be more than enough to carry the healing in a dungeon, but you have a lot more at your disposal. One of the most important skills is Divine Toll, which can be used to cast up to 5 Holy Shocks on enemy or friendly targets, and on top of that you can reduce the cooldown down to 45 seconds, making it another powerful button that you can press very often, and it's also very efficient if you combine it with Blessing of Virtue. Another very important interaction that we need to mention is the infusion of light. Your holy shock critical strikes empower your next spell and you're also going to be running a talent that allows you to stack two of these and further empower its effect. Your judgments are automatically going to consume this effect and prevent even more damage being dealt to your target. But keep in mind that the infusion of light also makes your next holy light a huge single target heal. So you can use that spell to consume them as well, especially if you're out of range and you need a single target spot healing. There's also a small combo that you can use with Holy Prism if you're running the Divine Favor talent, as Holy Prism further increases the effect of your next Holy Light and reduces the cast time. Back to the infusions of light, you want to be consuming those as much as you can, because you have a talent that reduces the cooldown of the Holy Ornament spell every time you consume an infusion of light. So that creates a pretty nice loop bringing you a lot of value, but it doesn't end there. Every time your holy armaments expire they give you another infusion of light proc and they also reduce the cooldown of Lay of Hands by 15 seconds. Now Lay on Hands is this huge single target godly heal that has an enormous cooldown of 10 minutes. So that means that usually you get to cast it just a couple of times in a dungeon, but with this talent the cooldown is reduced so much and so often that it is now a small cooldown that you can use much more often. And you can now utilize it instead of keeping it as a backup in a very bad situation. Last but not least, let's mention Aura Master which increases the effect of your Devotion Aura for 8 seconds. You should be running Devotion Aura up at all times, it makes everyone around you take 3% less damage and the Aura Mastery increases this effect to 12%, which is quite nice DR to have in heavy AoE damage for your whole group. We also have to mention the Blessing of Summer spell in this guide. This is a button that rotates between 4 different spells after you keep pressing it every 45 seconds. And it is notoriously a pain to micromanage as you can cast those spells either on yourself or on an ally. However, this skill has been reworked in this expansion, so now instead of switching targets, usually the most benefit is if you cast all 4 different blessings on yourself. And on cooldown. I am not going to go into much detail, you can definitely min-max the usages, especially of Blessing of Summer. But just know that they're going to give you extra damage, extra healing, extra mana and extra cooldown reduction. And it's even harder to min max those in a pug. So you get enough benefits if you keep casting them on yourself or you can take the other talent which is on the same node and it gives you a bunch of passive healing. But the best approach here is take Blessing of Summer, take a weak aura to remind you to cast it on cooldown and just throw it on yourself. So here's a talent build that includes everything we've talked about so far. You can of course copy it from the description of this video and there is some wiggle room a little bit both on the left and the right hand side. But what you see on the screen right now is pretty solid so I would recommend to start with it. And as you play a little bit you see if you can make a good usage of all the talents and whether or not you need to change something. Now when it comes to stats, 
item level is definitely a king because it brings you the most primary stats so your spells are going to be hitting for more. When it comes to secondary stats your best choice is haste. It's going to increase the rate at which you're casting your skills and it's going to reduce the cooldown of some of them so stack this as much as you can. Next on the list for this build is Critical Strike, as it has a lot of synergies with some of your skills on top of making them hit for more and harder. Your infusion of light procs are dependent on the Critical Strike and your Judgment Critical Strikes are also empowered based on your talents, so having more Crit Strike is definitely going to benefit you a lot. If you have some leftover stats you can stack them into versatility as this is going to increase the damage and healing that you do and give you some damage reduction which is quite nice for Mythic Plus. And the stat that you should pretty much avoid is Mastery as it gives you more healing based on the proximity of your targets but you scale better with the other stats that you see on the screen and this one also doesn't have a damaging component connected to it. As a Paladin you bring a lot to the table on top of the healing so let's mention some of the most important skills that you'll be pressing in the Mythic Plus dungeons. Blessing of Sacrifice is an external that you can cast on your tank or another party member, it reduces their damage taken but you take portion of the damage as well, so you have to be careful when you use it. Usually you want to combine this with your personal divine protection which with talents get the cooldown reduced just down to 45 seconds so you can press it quite often. And if things go really south you can press your divine shield which is your bubble, full immunity which can allow you not only to reduce the damage taken but also ignore mechanics. You can also cast Blessing of Protection which is full immunity to physical damage, another skill with a long cooldown but it has some pretty nice and useful usages throughout the dungeons. The same as Blessing of Freedom which provides full immunity to movement impairing effects and it has much shorter cooldown. You are not lacking in the CC department either, you have Hammer of Justice which is a single target stun and then you have Blinding Light which is an AoE disorient which is going to affect all the enemies around you. When you add on top the fact that you have a battle res, you have a very complete toolkit to handle all the difficulties that Mythic Plus can throw at you. That will be all for this Lightsmith Holy Paladin guide, thank you very much for watching, make sure to subscribe to get more content on this channel, I'll see you in the next video, now take care, bye bye and get out of here.